Hey there, my name is Arp. I'm a web developer, marketer, and illustrator who's decided to share everything I know about building websites with you. I started building and marketing websites nearly 20 years ago, and my knowledge can help entrepreneurs of all kinds, with an emphasis on creative entrepreneurs like artists. So with all the uncertainty in our lives thanks to the pandemic, now is the perfect time to build yourself a website, to start a new business, or build another stream of income. So in this first video, you'll learn why you need your own website and how to install WordPress without dealing with any code. In future videos, I'll go deeper into configuring your website, including setting up a blog, a portfolio, making the site look good, setting up a print-on-demand t-shirt shop, and rolling your own Patreon. And it all starts with a simple and easy WordPress installation. So we're gonna start off with a minute of history on something called sharecropping and how it relates to owning your own website. Sharecropping is an agricultural term where a person farms on somebody else's land and both share the production. It became quite common in the American South after the Civil War and it heavily favored the landowners while keeping most sharecroppers poor as hell. Sharecroppers would rent the land and lease equipment from the landowner. And they would even rent the house they lived in from the landowner. And often, the local laws made it so they could only sell their crop to their landowner. And you know the landowners wouldn't give them a good price for the crops. So the landowners had all the control and the sharecroppers got screwed. Well, nowadays, we have digital sharecropping. Digital sharecropping is the practice of building on websites that you don't own. Websites like Facebook and Instagram and Tumblr and Twitter, etc. They're like the sharecropping landlords. We create content on their sites. They own the site, they own the content, they have all the control and they keep all the money. Your profile or page on a social network is the same as building on rented property. You don't remodel the kitchen if you don't own the house, right? So on rented property, the landlord can make decisions that ruin everything you've worked for. Decisions like whose posts you can see, how many people see your posts, increasing the fees, changing their content policies, etc., etc. The only way to protect yourself is to have your own website and make it your hub. And by hub, I mean that you should, one, Use social networks as tools to find and engage with new fans and customers. Two, direct them to your website where they can find your blog posts, your art, your merch, etc. And three, get their names and emails before they leave your site. If you have your own site, you can build up a following that's not completely reliant on Facebook or Instagram or Patreon. It's guaranteed that those companies will change things to compete with other companies. And they're always going to think about their own bottom line first. And with your own site, you'll be able to weather the storms better. So a quick word on Wix, Squarespace, and site builders like that. They're fine if you want a simple brochure website or portfolio, but they are highly inflexible. If you want to sell anything on your site, your options are limited, and your best option might be paying 30 bucks a month or more for a service like Shopify. And that would be in addition to whatever you're already paying to Wix or Squarespace. The extra flexibility that a free WordPress website of your own offers is well worth it in the long run, especially for entrepreneurs. Now let's define some terms we need to know to install WordPress, websites, website hosting, and domains. A website is a collection of files, kind of like Word documents filled with code, along with images or other media. A browser sees these files and turns the code in them into web pages that you can read and interact with. So think of a website as being like a book, with all of the pages in the book being the site files. Now, this book needs a place to stay, and that's where web hosting comes in. A website's host is a computer that stores all the website's files. And this is also known as a server. This computer is connected to the internet so that people can access your website. So a website host is like a house that holds a lot of books, with each book being a website. So how do you find a house? You need an address, right? That's what a domain name is. It's your website's address. It's what you give when someone asks you for your website and you tell them something like, my website is www.bettyschickenshack.com. Examples of domains include apple.com, instagram.com, wikipedia.org, etc. I'm going to build it actually on a domain that I have, funny t-shirts plus, which is funny t-shirts pl.us. It's a site that I've had for ages. I had had it initially set up affiliate marketing site for funny t-shirts and I didn't 
put a ton of work into it. I made a little bit of money. It's actually every Christmas, like it seemed like people would find the site when they're looking for Christmas presents, uh, click the link, go to um, the t-shirt sites, buy something, then I get a little commission based on that. So since that domain is available and I figure I kind of want to have a t-shirt site anyway to put random t-shirts I created, if we can build a brand new site, then we'll have something that everyone can follow along with from scratch that will look the same. I'm going to open up my control panel and install WordPress now. Once you're logged in to your control panel, you will appear on a page like this. Uh, this is what's called cPanel. There are a couple of other control panel types that are used in hosts, but cPanel is the most common one. So most hosts will have this. So what we're going to do is look for something called Softaculous. That's a uh, cPanel option for installing software. Sometimes um, some hosts will actually just have an option called WordPress to make it super simple. Um, mine doesn't have that. So I'm going to go into this little search thing, type in soft for Softaculous, and here we go, Softaculous Apps Installer. Let's see what the site looks like currently before there's anything installed. We'll go to like Funny T-Shirts Plus, and it's nothing. It's a, this is what the you see it says um, cPanel all the way over at the bottom down here. So it lets you know it's a cPanel based hosting, and obviously there's nothing there. It's just the there's no site here page. So let's go back to the control panel. All right, that's cl clicked on that, and I'm just going to go over here to WordPress and click install. For the version of WordPress, choose the most recent version that's there. Choose the installation URL, always an HTTPS. Um, my hosting has automatic SSL certificates. The HTTPS signifies that the communication between the website and the server is It keeps it super secure when someone types in something on your website that goes to the server, they can't read it. So you choose the installation URL and then you put in the domain. So site settings. So let's just call this, um, you can give the site name. I'm gonna call it, um, we'll just call it funny t-shirts plus. Um, it's called, I don't know, something, uh, the site description, funny t-shirts for everyone yay okay notice here there's an option that says enable multi-site do not ever do that so we're gonna have an admin username um, I'm gonna blank this out in fact I'm gonna put it right at the top here because I don't want people to actually know what the admin username is because that's a bad idea it says if, if a bad actor knows what the admin username is they will try to login so don't mind me i'm just going to hide that okay so language is going to be english i'm not obviously if you're if you want to use a different language you can there's quite a few options here You can put in your email address here to um, get the installation details, including whatever password you put in. I'm going to skip it because I have this stuff memorized. I'm going to click install. Boom, done. Okay, so let's go, let's get the URL. I'm going to copy the link, go back here and see if we've got a site of some sort. There we go. A new website with the default current default WordPress theme. That's it for today. I hope you've learned that installing WordPress isn't that difficult. If you followed along, you've got a brand new website that's ready for customizing. In the next set of videos, I'll be covering logging into your site, configuring it, creating content, making it look nice, and a lot more. Thanks so much for watching, and please.
please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Hope you all are doing well, and check you later!